coming up. But now to our exclusive with our dear, dear friend, country music star Naomi Judd. She's written a powerful new memoir. It's called River of Time, where she opens up about battling depression and where her life is now. It's an inspiring story for millions of others who are also struggling. I will stand by you. She is part of country music royalty, the Judds. Naomi Judd, along with her daughter Winona, skyrocketed to the top of country music fame. But six years ago, when the touring ended, and the spotlight faded, Naomi hit rock bottom, battling severe depression and anxiety, leading to several stents in psychiatric wards and a heavy regimen of medication. Marty. Today, Naomi is staging a comeback, not with music, but with a powerful message in her new book, River of Time. I have to say something right off the bat because I trust you so much. Mm -hmm. It's because I know people will realize I don't look like I usually look. My hands shake real bad medication, nothing I can do about it. And my face, I feel like a balloon. My face is all swollen because of the medication. I really haven't been eating ice cream and candy. <laughs> I really haven't. It's with that mix of humor and humility that Naomi is sharing her story with the public. Because they see me in rhinestones, you know, with glitter in my hair. That really is who I am. But then I would come home and not leave the house for three weeks and not get out of my pajamas and not practice normal hygiene. It was really bad. <clears throat> Why now, Naomi? Why do you share this now? Because what I've been through is extreme. My final diagnosis was severe depression, treatment resistant, because they tried me on every single thing they had in their arsenal. They really felt like if I live through this, I want someone to be able to see that they can survive because there's 40 million of us out there. There's always hope. My mother always said, make your mess your message so you can help others. And that's what I get from reading your book. I think that's one of the reasons I wanted to write the book because I never acknowledged all the bad stuff that people did to me. As part of her treatment, Naomi had to confront a very difficult childhood that she says included being molested by an uncle when she was just three and a half years old. I was a cute kid. I smiled and laughed. I was very obedient. There's actually a photo in the book where typically I'm posing. I got my hand on my hip and I'm, you know, grinning for the camera. And then Grandmommy Judd made me stand next to Uncle Charlie. And my personality has completely changed. And it's interesting where I'm holding my hands, like right mm. here. And I look like I'm disgusted and terrified. When these things would happen to you and you'd go running to an adult, you were so hopeful that they would just see the fright in you and ask you, but they were not equipped. Mm -hmm. Nobody was there for me. I had to realize that in a way, I had to parent myself. We all have this inner child, and I needed for the first time in my life to realize that I got a raw deal. Okay, now I'm a big girl. Put on your big girl pants and deal with it. And I started in therapy, and I call it radical acceptance. Every day I exercised. I would walk up to Ashley's house, which is a mile that way, and I would holler at her from her front step. If she was home, she'd come out and give me a hug. A simple hug from her youngest daughter, one of many small but meaningful steps towards Naomi's recovery. Ashley and I are so stinking much alike. I mean, we have the same mannerisms. We both read a whole lot. We both love new places. I mean, there's such similarities. While her relationship with Ashley has been steady, the same cannot be said for her relationship with Winona, or Y, as she calls her, born when Naomi was just a teenager. From the day I knew she existed, mm -hmm. it was the two of us against the world. And then through the decades, we kind of grew up together, because it was really just the two of us. And I'm always telling her, if I'd known better, I would have done better. So why well, bore the brunt of all the, the mistakes I made? And we talk about them. We've been through a lot of therapy together. In 2010, during their final tour and the filming of their docu-series, The Judds on OWN, tensions between the two reached a new high. I love her, but 
there are just times we need a break from each other. Are you still on a break? Yes. We're still a little estranged from each other. And that happens with mother's daughters. If she's going to watch this, what do you think she'll think? I think she'll say, good for you, Mom, for finally being willing to talk about the bad stuff. And with her husband of 27 years, Larry Strickland, by her side, Naomi is slowly able to put the bad stuff behind her. What advice do you have for someone who has a loved one with depression? Get ready to, to walk that path with them because they're gonna, need, they're gonna need you every minute. Taking each day as it comes, Naomi is seeing the brighter side of life again. My everyday life is not only manageable, it's even enjoyable once more. I laugh a lot. I'm content and at peace because I practice radical acceptance every single day. Please join me in telling the truth about depression and anxiety to anyone who will listen. It's a disease of the brain. I've told my story. Now you know, and you can tell yours. You're not alone. I'm still here. And you better believe that Naomi Judd is still here. That was um, at her home outside of Nashville. I get a little emotional because it was just, she was just so incredibly open. Mm -hmm. And she is Mama Judd. She is Mama Judd. And she just really thought it was time to share with people what she was going through in hopes that it would help others. I love that expression, radical acceptance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you'd known better, would have done better. Yep. That's, yeah. that's a phrase. Key of, to life. Yeah. Nice share. And Naomi's book, River in Time, is out today.